Kupanole akala o kohia. Kohia ia lahina. O ke kukuna o kalapaa. O ke pea o hilina hilinehu. O kala o ka kamana. O ka hui o ke kamanuila. O ka ehu o halulu. O ke Eho o halulu, ka haina mai a hai, ka ina haka ia mai lilia i ka laa. E keiki, hele ana, o wakea, o wakea i ka laa lo, o ka laa i ka luna. O ke keiki laa ke ia o wakea, o ho o ka hua ai. O wakea i lalo, o kaluna, o kalapa luna. O kekeki lakea, o wakea i koo hao i ka ai. O ea, o iha, o kala, hanao kala. O kala ho i au nei, kala no nei. O vai lá, o camuana, ai a, ai a hoi a. Se 
seated or standing, please lift your voices in a song for our opening hymn number 61, Lo, the earth awakens again. Aloha, and welcome to the First Unitarian Church of Honolulu, where we strive together to build the beloved community and to boldly grow compassion, justice, and joy. It is good to be here together, sharing our hearts with one another. We are so glad that you are here. Our names are Gabe and Reverend Dr. Greg. I use he, him pronouns, and Gabe uses he, they pronouns, along with so many others up front and throughout the building and even outside. We have the honor of guiding you through worship on this joyous Easter morning. Easter is a high holiday in the Christian calendar. And as Christianity is a source of our liberal religion, we're going to take some time to contextualize and explore the meaning of this day. This service will last about 75 to 90 minutes so that we can explore the fullness of this observance here in our unique and special Hawaiian context. I extend a special greeting to so many of you visitors right here in the building and also online. Hey, folks on Zoom. <laughs> ah, for those in the building, please join us right after the service for light refreshments and fellowship. Also for an Easter egg roll, which I'll talk about a little bit more right after. I know, right? <laughs> we've got it. We've got it. And uh, we want to make sure that you join us for some cake as well. It'll be great. We'll talk story and get to know you better. At this time, please take a moment to locate the exit nearest to you. Should we need to leave the sanctuary at any point during the service, please reserve the exit to the right for those with limited mobility. It's the exit with the ramp. You are also welcome to move about this space or go outside as you need. And 
Keiki, Makwa, and those Puna young at heart are welcome right up here uh, at our Keiki corner just to the front and right of the sanctuary. We've got crowns, we've got some activity packets, we've got some bouncy, cozy cushions. It should be a fun time. Anyone can come up here at any point. There are several restrooms on this level. All of them are single stall and for use by people of all genders. Finally, check out our newsletter and visit our website, uuhonolulu.org, for the most up-to-date information about our cherished community. And so, whether you go to church on Sunday morning or light candles on Friday nights, whether you've been hurt by religion, saved by it, or maybe a little bit of both, whether you're brand new to spiritual community or a seasoned seeker, whoever you are, wherever you come from, you are welcome here. Come, let us worship together. Please join me in offering recognition for this chain of islands that we call home and her people. On behalf of the First Unitarian Church of Honolulu, we acknowledge that we gather on Aina, which is the traditional and ancestral homeland of the Hawaiian people. We recognize that Her Majesty, Queen Liliuokalani, yielded the Hawaiian We honor our shared responsibility to this land and these waters. We commit to learning from Hawaiian wisdom, and we strive to repair and deepen our relationships as our neighbors and friends. Aloha. As Richard lights our chalice, symbol of our free faith, I offer these words of Reverend Susan McGinn. She writes, let us do the unthinkable thing. We'll sit and breathe together on the edge of our seats in a world that pollinates and reproduces, shape-shifting and breaking into bloom. Let us sit and breathe together as one breath. Sit still just long enough for each of our dreams to rise, silently hover over us, Dreams mingling like old transcendent friends, floating, finally free and light. Each of our dreams stripping away fear like unnecessary winter layers that obey gravity all the way to the ground. Far too heavy for the likes of us, we the living on Easter Sunday. Please remain seated as we seal this prayer with our mission song. versions of the story I'm about to share. This one uses the wisdom of the Reverend Sophia Lyon Foz and pictures by Brian Wildsmith. Look and listen closely. 
Have you heard this story before? You might hear it later in another way. Listen for what's the same and what's different. Jesus was a great teacher long, long ago. He lived all the way across the world and traveled in places like Bethlehem and Jerusalem. Now, Jesus didn't teach reading or math or science or even art. Nope, Jesus was one person who taught people how to grow compassion, justice, and joy. Jesus showed people how to treat others how they wanted to be treated. He showed people that if they shared what they had, then everyone could have enough. Jesus showed that people should care for and love everyone. Some of Jesus' students loved what Jesus said so much that they followed him all over the place. These students were called his disciples. However, things weren't all smooth sailing for Jesus and his disciples. The things Jesus taught did not follow the same rules that the Roman leaders and the Jewish leaders told people to follow. Jesus showed you didn't have to say fancy things or be rich to be cared for. As more and more people followed Jesus, leaders got more and more upset. How could they keep their power when Jesus showed people they could live in a different way? So the leaders planned to kill Jesus. One of Jesus' disciples, named Judas, betrayed Jesus and helped the leaders with their plan. The night before Jesus died, he celebrated the Jewish holiday of Passover. He celebrated at a feast similar to a Seder, but a little bit different. It was earlier than that, with his 12 disciples. The next day, Jesus was arrested, and then he was killed, and his body was put in a cave. Three days later, Jesus' mother and a few other women went to take care of his body. When the stone in front of his grave was moved, and his body was missing. From this mystery, the religion we know as Christianity grew. Many Christians believe that after Jesus was killed, he rose from the dead and went up to heaven to help the people on earth. Many Unitarian Universalists see this story a little bit differently. Many years ago, a religious educator like me, named Sophia Faz, explained in a UU way what happened after Jesus died. Here's how the Reverend Faz told it. The people who followed Jesus were so sad after he died. They could not understand why God had allowed their teacher to be killed like a rebel or a criminal. These people gathered day after day in each other's homes and told stories of the wonderful experiences they had had with Jesus. They held their memories of Jesus so close, it seemed like they heard his voice and saw his face for real. Some of them couldn't tell if they had dreamed they'd talk to Jesus again or if it was really happening. Finally, several of them dreamed they saw Jesus rise up from the earth, higher and higher, until he disappeared entirely. They believed he had gone to heaven to be with God, but that Jesus would come back to earth and save the world. The years passed by. The people who knew Jesus they all died. Their children and their children's children, they also died. It has been over 2,000 years, and Jesus has still not come back. There are those who still hope he will come back to life again. Others, including Unitarian Universalists, believe that Jesus will never live on the earth again. But his spirit never needs to die. His spirit is in his words and deeds, which still give us wisdom today. We keep the spirit of Jesus' teachings alive when we live by the golden rule or its follow-up, the platinum rule, when we treat others the way they want to be treated. 
And when we remember the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount, to love everyone, especially those who are poor, hurt, and struggling. When someone dies, the people who love them keep their memories and stories alive a long, long time after they die. Please remain seated as we sing our hymn of celebration, number 1050, 1050, Jazz Alleluia. Choose a line and we'll sing until Noe stops playing the piano. <laughs> custom here at First Unitarian Church of Honolulu to share our monthly non-pledge offerings with a group whose mission is in concert with our own. This morning, we don't have to go very far because we are supporting our own church emergency fund. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The Church Emergency Fund is used to provide confidential assistance to those facing emergency financial need here in our church, Ohana, and also in the community at large. Now, we take this offering three times a year, uh, Christmas Eve, Easter Sunday, like today, and in the fall. By providing money to those in need, we live out our mission of boldly growing compassion, justice, and joy. And so, I know how generous you are, and there are many ways you can be generous. You can place some cash in a bowl. You should always have cash for the bowl. Um, <laughs> that will be passed around. Or you can send a check to, uh, to the church, note that it is for the Church Emergency Fund. <gasps> Scan the QR code on the screen to be directed to a secure giving page on the church's website. You can also give securely by text. Uh, this encrypted form of giving allows you to give to the Church Emergency Fund and to make payment toward your pledge. The offering will now be freely given and gratefully received. The song that we're singing this morning is called Colin Lan. And it is a beloved song in Wales, where it is considered the second national anthem. We will be singing in Welsh. Does anybody here know Welsh? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <woo! laughs> uh -oh. And then we will sing again in English.
Your gifts help support the mission of this church as we build the beloved community within our walls and without. Thank you for your generosity. Now invite Jim Cooper and Teresa Morligan forward. Would those seeking to rejoin the membership of this congregation please come forward now? <laughs> Today, we welcome back into community Jim Wood, who has chosen to commit once again to this congregation after an absence by initialing his original signature from 1977 in our membership book. Jim, we are so glad to have you here with us and that you have chosen this community of fellow seekers to travel with you on your life journeys. Will you accept our gifts of fellowship, discovery, and service. Will you offer us your unique presence and gifts? Will you add your name to the long history of Unitarian Universalists who spread hope with our living faith? Will you engage with us as we seek to create a community and a world dedicated to compassion, justice, and joy? If so, please say, I will. I will. So shall I on this one now? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Oh. Congregation, will you welcome the this new member with the warmth and comfort of your fellowship? Will you seek to add your strengths and talents to the new gifts they bring us, he brings us? Will you share our triumphs and our struggles as our community grows and changes? If you agree, please say, we will. We will. Let us make the following promises to one another to hold one another in community, with common purpose, and common love in the midst of our beautiful diversity of belief. Please repeat with me. We covenant to remain true to the spirit of love that flows through this church and guides us. We promise to work together even, even when, when it, it is challenging. challenging. We, we promise, promise to boldly grow compassion, compassion justice, justice, and joy here in our congregation and in the world around us. Let us all cheer. <laughs> Please be seated. readings this morning. I will do it in Olelo Hawaii, the Hawaiian language, and Richard will provide the English translation. Ika mo olelo no Iesu na Mateo. A kukuki akula lako ia resulama u hiki akulo ibetemaga makamauna olevita ilaila hoona akula o Iesu inahaumana ilua. I aku la, i a laua, e helu aku o lua i ki kauhale, e kupuna mai ai o lua. A e loa, koki ia o lua, ka hoki, ua nā kiki ia, a me ke keiki me ia. A vehe a o o lua, a e kai mai i o une. I na paha, i o lelo mai ki kahi i o lua, e i haku, Naka haku ia mau mea e pono ae. 
alai lai e ku u koki mai ina ia na hoki he le akula ua mau hamana la ahana akula e liki meke Yesu i ka oho mai i a ia e la ua ka mai la ua i hua hoki la a meke keiki u ho ala a ea la ko i na kapa o la ko ma luna o lua e ho i akula i a Yesu ma luna i ho i ho la akula I ka nui o ka po e kanaka. I ko la ko kapa me ka ala nui a oke oke ala e ke kahi po e i na la 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 ao. A ha alele i hola ma ka ala nui. A ku la hosana i ka mamo o Davida. E ho onani i a ka mea e hele mai ne ma ka inoa o haku. Hosana i ka lani ki e ki e loa. A hiki a kola i a Iesu Loma, pi hoi hoi a ele ku kakua lani a pao ni nga mao la lako o vaike, o vaike la. I a kola ka po i kanaka o Iesu ki ia ki kaola no Nazareta i Galilea. The story of Jesus according to Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them. And as he sat and, and he sat on them, a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds all that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Seated or standing, please lift your voices in song for hymn number 1068, Rising Green.
please take a posture of meditation or prayer. Please pray with me. Epule kako. Spirit of life, keakua of many names and beyond all naming, source which connects each to all. You are here with us this Easter morning and in our time of prayer. We give thanks for the rebirth of the sun as the days lengthen and temperatures even out. We know the blessings of being here in this building, on this aina, in these islands, which have seen so many people come, go, and pass into memory. We are grateful to the ancestors who dreamt of a world that could sustain us with compassion, justice, and joy as we tackle a climate crisis. Spirit of love, support us in expanding our circle of care to include all who go hungry and those whose food or housing is insecure. We pray for all who are victims or survivors of emotional, spiritual, psychological, physical, or sexual violence. Help us hold firmly all who are meeting old age, death, or disability unprepared for without the community support that they need. Spirit of justice, guide us as we bend your arc toward the care of trans and non-binary people, women, and all who are marginalized for their gender. We pray for laws and lawmakers who lift up our rights to be experts on our own gender identity, to use bathrooms in peace, to compete in athletic divisions that match our gender identity, to decide if and when to bring life into the world, and not to be taxed for necessary health and hygiene products. We pray to make the world more responsive and caring we pray to make this place more caring for all victims and survivors of gender violence. We also ask your guidance, spirit of justice, to build a world that studies war no more. We pray for all in war zones, those in Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Palestine. We beg for an end to the targeted violence toward and killing of journalists in warring regions. We pray for an immediate ceasefire in Israel and Palestine and for all hostages to re be returned to their families. Remind us to make a more joy-filled world. Keokua of gladness, we know you work in ways large and small, even in a world that seems kapakahi, topsy-turvy. Embolden our resolve to bring joy into the lives of all we encounter to meet challenges head on and collectively. Comfort our minds and hearts with memories of past joy when all seems overwhelming. All this we pray together as we say, Amen, Ashe, and blessed be. Kamuulelo no Yesu na Ioane. Alai lai, haavi aku lakile ia no lako, e kau ia oe ma kike e. Ala lau aku la lako ia Yesu a alakai aku la. E hele aku la, e ai i hale ana i kona kea, makahi i kapa i kai vaihi po'o, a o goleta goka maka o lelo hebero. Ma laila lako, i kau ai ia, me ki kaa. A me naka naka i lua me ia, me ki la au au ki ia au au a o ia suma vaina. Hako iho o Pilato i kapalapala, akau aku la makakea, pene kapalapala ana, o Yesu, nazan no nazarate ke ali'i o nauideo. Nui kapoe, 
wada. E hele 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 ua pala pala la. No ka mea, ua kokoke, ma ke kūlana kūkalana kalawahi i kalala ai, o Yesu me ke kea. Ua kakao i aia, ma ka heberu o lelo, a me ka helena, a me ka roma, o lele akula na ka huna nui o na uida i a palato, mai pala pala oe, o ke ali i no uidi ao, a ka ua o lelo no ia, o vau no ke ali i no ka u de ado, o lelo maila o pilato, o ka mea au i pala pala ai, i ka oe kao i pala pala. A i ka manawa, e kao, ai ka po e ko i a Yesu ma ke kea. Lavi no lako i kona mau kapa. A puna au au e a ele i na puu e a hapakahi no ke la kao ke i a ko a me ka papakomo. A ole e humu humu i a i ka papakomo. Ua ulana kokawa i mai luna a halala loa i lalo. Ma hope a e la liki hola e Yesu ua pau, pau neke hana ia. I maila ia i ko ae ka palapala hela me. Ua make vai a au. I vai ho ana i lala ki ko hopu. Ua piha i ka vai na. A ho o piha i hola la ko i ka hua ae i kai i ka vai na. A kau a kula makala au u sopa a hu opa a kula i kona vaha. Aloa o ia i Yesu ka vaina i maila pao a kula. A kulo i hola kona poo a ku au ia i ka uhane. The story of Jesus according to John. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written, put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews, Pilate answered. What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the, the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. At this time, a silent meditation. Kamolelo no Yesu na mareko. Alailai, ahala aela ka sabati, 
waku ai o Maria kama Galena, ame Maria kama kua vihini o Lokobo, ame Solome, ina mea ala, a hele mai la lako, a i a lololo i ala. The story of Jesus according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. A ike kakahayaka nui akalamua aka heberoma akapoka ana aka ia hele akula lako ikahali kupapau. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. Kama ilio ihola lako ia lako ihono na vaela e holoka a e kapoha kuno kako mai kapoka a e o kahale kupa apu. They had been saying to one another, "Who will roll away the stone?" for us from the entrance to the tomb. Na na, aku la la ko, ike hola ua, olo kaa, a e aku na pohaku, no ka mea, he pohaku nui loa ia. When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back.
anecdote of the butterfly. The penumbra asked the shadow, saying, formerly you were walking on and now you have stopped. Formerly you were sitting and now you have risen up. How is it that you are so without stability? The shadow replied, how should I know what I do one thing and do not do another? Formerly, I, Quang Kao, dreamt that I was a butterfly. A butterfly flying about, feeling that it was enjoying itself. I did not know that it was I, Kao. Suddenly, I awoke and was myself again, the veritable cow. I did not know whether it had been formerly cow, dreaming that he was a butterfly, or it was now a butterfly dreaming that it was cow. But between cow and a butterfly, there must be a difference. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who didn't hear, Karen said something that I like to paraphrase as, Pastor, make it plain. <laughs> and I'll, I'll do just such a thing. I'll do just such a thing. But first, I, I want to acknowledge that I'm not an expert on Taoism, all right? Um, I'm actually an expert on very few things, despite having studied so much in my lifetime. Um, but, you know, the thing about Taoism is it's a religious and philosophical tradition that I've come back to over and over again since I was a teenager. I find it deeply meaningful. When I'm at my lowest, the Tao Te Ching gets me set up right. I first learned about Taoism in seventh grade as part of the religious education program at my home congregation, the Unitarian Church of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I found it interesting, but it wasn't really until I revisited it as a high schooler uh, that it truly moved me. And in short order, I went from reading Benjamin Hoff's 1983, The Tao of Pooh on Taoism, to declaring to my mother that I really wanted to leave high school so I could just sit under a tree and experience the way. <laughs> to her credit, she said absolutely nothing. What was there to say? And, you know, after a few months of nothing in response to repeated declarations just like this, I moved on to the Vedas and the Bhagavad Gita and the urge to only sit under a tree passed. I did graduate from high school. <laughs> Hoff's 1983 text made Taoism and some of its applications like Tai Chi more accessible to Europeans and North Americans in particular, uh, mainly because the fourth century before Common Era text, so 300 years before Jesus, right? It was really using more analogies and metaphors based on political and worldview understandings of warring Chinese states that have since faded from memory. The two foundational texts of Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching and Zhuangzi's uh, Zhuangzi combine poetry, personification, and casual observation to offer a third path, a third path to active resistance to the world or retreating from it, a pathway of acceptance. They offer that by living in harmony and accepting the path of least resistance in an often chaotic world, we can lose what troubles us without also losing ourselves in the process. So in this way, Taoism actually provides a powerful lens through which to examine the death and life of Jesus. The influential man and teacher who was born some 300 years after this text, these texts, original publication. We have revisited a few of the events in the last week of the 33-year-old's life in story this morning. It's a tale fit to give us whiplash. 
In just a matter of five days, Jesus goes from celebrated spiritual guide to wanted dead, not alive, enemy of the state, scourge of the Roman Empire. It's like watching a season of euphoria. <laughs> but we're going to use this time, we're going to use this time to focus on the very end of the story we've heard today. We turn our focus to Easter Sunday morning, the first Easter Sunday morning, when Jesus' mother, aunt, and good friend Mary went to the tomb. Lost in thought and grief, they worry about the most practical thing, how they're going to roll back the stone that covers the entrance to this tomb. That's when the text offers. When they looked up, they saw that the stone that was very heavy was already rolled back. And you see, while all four Gospels continue the story and offer other reported miracles that happen after this point, I love to stay in this moment of mystery and uncertainty with this sudden reveal right at daybreak and awakening of sorts. The narrative offers us so many possibilities. The questions quickly come. Maybe someone arrived early and rolled the stone away. Uh, once while teaching this story to children, a small voice from the back of the room offered that perhaps there was an earthquake, and that rolled the stone away. And interestingly enough, there is an earthquake in the story of Jesus according to Matthew, but it happens at the moment of Jesus' death rather than at the moment of his entombment, so that they don't quite line up, but there is an earthquake. Perhaps a supernatural force, the divine itself, rolls back the stone. It's possible the stone wasn't actually that heavy and rolled away all on its own, or maybe the Romans were right, and a handful of his followers snuck off with his body in the middle of the night to prove that Jesus was divine. All of these questions come quickly to the mind, but the question I never considered until I applied a Taoist lens was whether we are to take the perspective of the women happening upon the open tomb or of something or someone inside the tomb who suddenly encounters these onlookers. This shift in perspective is possible for several reasons. All four accounts of Jesus's life have a narrator who is not present at the tomb. So this is a reported story. None of the stories agree on all the details of this scene of coming upon the tomb, not even about who was actually there to see it happening. Each of the books of Jesus' life were written decades after his death, often passed down through oral and theatrical traditions. Not everyone was literate in the ancient world, so many of the stories were acted out for several centuries as a way of teaching a harmonized version of the text. They were then revised, rewritten, and sometimes even rearranged for another few decades after they were initially written down. And they all more or less arrived at their current form somewhere around the beginning of the second century common era, so sometime in the 100s. Another interesting reason that we can take this perspective shift is that women in the stories of Jesus' life often demonstrate the intimate, relational, and family life of teacher Jesus. Especially in Matthew's account, women are almost exclusively presented in interior spaces, the spaces where Jesus eats and sleeps, where he's more human than prophet, more tired than determined in his ministry. With the presence of the women at the tomb, then it's not too huge a leap to wonder, just wonder for a moment if we, the reader, or more accurately, the narrator, is already inside the tomb, viewing the surprise of the women outside. Here's where Chuangzu helps us. While there is little historical evidence that a person named Chuangzu ever actually existed, the Shuangzi that is attributed to him is the second foundational text of Taoism. 
much like the statements attributed to Jesus. The Shuangzi uses parables consisting of dialogues between forces of the natural world, composite characters in the Confucian society of his day, and humorous critiques of the hierarchies of that same society to help us understand how to accept the world but transform ourselves. In the anecdote of the butterfly, a title I gave an excerpt of a 19th century translation of Zhu's work, again written in 4th century before Jesus lived, the author tries to help us understand multiple perspectives as a form of transforming our actions in the world. While uh, penumbra and shadow, uh, celestial shadow and a uh, regular shadow uh, are speaking, they, they try and understand what causes them to change. We're clear here that a celestial shadow and a regular shadow are kind of the same thing, but we can take the perspective, like the eclipse we're going to have in a few days, that the shadow can be cast by an actual celestial body, or the celestial body can cause us to cast a shadow. That's the only, you know, maybe distinction without a difference, but Shuangzi uh, goes on to explain. The penumbra itself is only the result of the movement of the sun, clouds, rotation of the earth. And this gives way to the shadow and penumbra's discussion about dreams. About dreams. If a person dreams of being a butterfly, a butterfly might as well dream about being human. I, I've never probed for a butterfly's dreams. Have you? Yes. It, uh, Richard has. Richard has. Thank you. I will ask you more later. But honestly, it's only when we wake up, it's only when we wake up that we realize that we are either butterfly or human, not, not both at the same time. The only difference is that when we wake up, we behave differently if we're butterfly or if we're human. It's the dream that matters. In that dream state, there is boundless possibility. It's a way of saying that the message, the dream, is more important than the messenger, the dreamer. Zhu calls this the transformation of things, or differences that exist only when we act in the world, but not actually at a base or essential level that, in that dream state. The idea of an essential level is helpful for understanding the concept of resurrection. We must deform before we can transform. We must return to the dream before we can wake up and act on it from a variety of perspectives, as the onlookers who see the tomb open or as some other entity inside of the tomb, as the human who is taking action in the world or as the butterfly who takes different action in the world. And most importantly, in this way, we understand that resurrection itself is actually always within reach. If we interpret the scene of the women finding Jesus' tomb from this particular Taoist perspective, resurrection becomes less about how the stone rolled back and where did Jesus go. Resurrection reveals itself as a power to shift our human perspective fluidly and holistically, all at once, to understand whose goals different perspectives serve, that is, who benefits from a given interpretation of the stories of Jesus' life. It allows us to align ourselves with the perspective whose goal is to hold everyone in the circle of beloved community. So when we pause the narrative, even for just a moment at the stone had already been rolled away, we stay in the uncertainty. We stay in the dream. The concept of resurrection then shifts from a single person to a communal experience, to all of the women there, to all of us reading or hearing the story now. But it's still an intimate experience. We have to actually interact with the text, interact with the story. The women in the story have to interact with the natural world that's going on around them. 
the inside of the tomb, outside of the tomb, dance of humans, the natural world, and the mystery of the whole encounters, of the whole encounter gives a rise to new, pass, new possibilities, new pathways for living compassionately, justly, and joyfully. Jesus is not in the tomb, but we're still here. We're still right here looking on. The tomb is open and so are our minds. How we make sense of the dream and sort through the possibilities inform how we will act on what we have just been shown or on what we are reading and what we are exploring in this hour. Resurrection then right at our fingertips. And so when the morning comes in the story of Jesus or in our own lives, when we wake up, when we know that the difference between the human and the butterfly is just a perspective shift, it's a false way of separating our dreams of a beloved community where compassion is a reflex, where justice is real and a deeper joy is their product from the hard work it will take to get there. We can all get there by bringing the new energy, ideas, and resources we have just learned about resurrection right at our fingertips. What Taoist thought teaches us is that, resur- uh, is that resurrection is always within reach. Say it with me. Resurrection is always within reach. One more time. Resurrection is always within reach. We are human. And we are butterfly. And today, we choose to fly. Today, we choose to act on our dreams. Today, we choose to resurrect the power of community, a community where all are welcome. All are welcome. Say it with me. All are welcome. Resurrection is at our fingertips, and all are welcome. All of this we hold in prayer as together we say, Amen, Amen. Ashe, Ashe. Ashe. and Happy Easter. Easter. Seated or standing, please lift your voices in song for our closing hymn, number 1010, Morning Has Come. Please be seated. 
As Gabe comes forward, we extinguish the chalice and we offer the words of the Reverend Kimberly Quinn Johnson. I will begin and then we will extinguish the chalice together. As we extinguish our chalice, we remember that we are not perfect, but we are perfectly fitted for this day. We are not without fault, but we can be honest to face our past as we chart a new future. May we be bold and courageous to chart that new future. May we have faith in a future that is not known. We are the ones we have been waiting for. The words of the Reverend Josh Powlek help us bless the work we are called to do this morning and every day. After the hosannas have all been shouted, after the anguished moments in the garden have been spent, after take this bread and eat, take this wine and drink, after betrayal with a kiss, after hands washed and 39 lashes, after seven last words and he breathed his last, after crucifixion and death, after laying the body in the tomb and rolling away the stone, after proclamations of he is risen. Now let us rise. Now let us awaken to a new dawn, a new day. Let us remake the world with the hope of Easter. Let us set free the prisoners, house the homeless, educate the children, offer gainful work to all who are willing and able to work, protect soil, water, air and food, and all forms of state-sanctioned violence, now may we awaken and stay woke. Now may we rise and stay risen. Now, this day and every day. Amen, Ashe, and blessed be. Following our song of peace and recessional, we look forward to seeing you in the gallery for refreshments, including a cake to celebrate our returning member. <laughs> we have an all ages Easter egg roll, more of a roll than a hunt. You'll see what it looks like on the front lawn with so many goodies. Please allow Kiki up to age 13 to go first. After that, have a blast. <laughs> And now, as we sing our song of peace, please remember to ask before taking someone else's hand. Seated or standing, let's lift our voices for our song of peace, Hawaii Aloha.